If you have diabetes, this is where you need to pay attention. The eyes use a lot of blood and they have small capillaries. This is a bad combination for folk with diabetes. Think of it as diabetes making your blood thicker. You get more junk floating in it. In large arteries, it's not so bad. But the smaller the blood vessels, the more likely they are to clog and damage the tissue. Clogging makes the blood vessels weaker and increases the chance of bleeding into the vitreous humor. The retina has two circulatory systems that can be destroyed. Your photoreceptors, the rods and cones, are sandwiched between these two blood supplies. The first one is called the retinal circulatory system. It sits in front of your retina and leaves its shadow on the retina. But since it's consistent, your brain ignores it. This system brings oxygen and nourishment to all the support neurons of your photoreceptors. The retina is a complex net of cells organized in five layers. There are three layers of nerve cells and two of neural connections. All of these cells and axons must be ignored by the photoreceptors because like the retinal circulatory system, they are in front of the receptors. The eye seems to be wired backwards. It doesn't make much sense that light has to pass all these structures before it reaches the receptors. But the eye needs a big blood supply in order to operate properly. It needs one in front and one behind the retina. So a few more components doesn't really matter. The brain just ignores them. In order from front to back, you'll encounter ganglion cells that connect to the optic nerve that in turn carry the signals to the brain. More than 30 types of interconnectors called Ackerman cells, bipolar cells, horizontal cells, and rods and cones. Albinos sometimes have damaged ganglion cells. In this case, light is successfully transformed into neural signals, but the image isn't communicating well to the optic nerve. These ganglion cells is also where red-green colorblindness occurs. When the photoreceptors are at rest, they continuously release glutamate, a major neurotransmitter. When light hits them, they decrease the release of glutamate, which triggers the horizontal cells. These horizontal cells tell the adjacent photoreceptors not to fire. The result is photoreceptors that are triggered by light and photoreceptors that are turned off. This provides clear edges to images in finer detail. This complex pattern is repeated many times and occurs very rapidly. Behind the retina is the pigment epithelium. As you can guess, anything associated with pigment is going to be different in albinos. For normal eyes, this thin layer of hexagonal cells nourishes the rods and cones, and keeps light from bouncing back. Since albinos don't have pigment here, light tends to bounce back to their photoreceptors, triggering them when it shouldn't. The result is a fuzzier image. Humans are supposed to have pigment here. In contrast, cats don't. It makes their eyes glow. It also maximizes their night vision. And no, albinos don't have really good night vision. As near as I can tell, there are no major advantages to being an albino.